it's hard to believe that three books that don't even have a similar writing style could have anything in common. Yet each one of these books presented a character to which I resonated with. Let's take a look, shall we? The Alchemist follows the journey of a young shepherd boy named Santiago as he leaves his home in Spain to travel to the deserts of Egypt in search of a great treasure. He meets a lot of very interesting characters along the way, such as the King of Salem, who originally convinced Santiago to follow his dream, and the Englishman, who is on his own journey in search of the alchemist. Now, the reason that I resonated with Santiago in the story is because of his determination and his ability to carry on through the challenges. He keeps on going in order to get to his goal, no matter what keeps getting thrown at him. Even when he finds out that his treasure was never in Egypt at all, but back in Spain, he appreciates the lessons that he learnt on his journey, which ended up being a much greater reward. I think the author actually says it best. There is only one way to learn. It's through action. Everything you need to know, you have learnt through your journey. 12-year-old David stars in the strange and sad tale of the Book of Lost Things. Set during World War II, young David struggles with the loss of his mother. He begins showing habits and signs similar to that of OCD. For instance, if he were to knock his head, he'd have to knock it a second time in order to keep those numbers even. He begins to lose a sense of reality, refusing to let go of his mother. He soon starts hearing her voice calling out to him, and the books that he turns to for comfort start talking to him. Each seem to have their own voice, their own personality, their own opinions. Things only take a turn for the worse when David is sucked into a strange world filled with the twisted versions of the fairy tales that he held so dear. Now, the reason that I resonated with David is because of his way of coping. In times of grief, I too have turned to writing stories and fairy tales as a way to deal with the problem, as a way to cope. I've also developed habits as a way to try and bring a sense of control. For David, it was not constructive, and so when he spoke about it to his friend, the woodsman, this is what he had to say. We all have our routines, he said softly, but they must have a purpose and provide an outcome that we can see and take some comfort from, or else they have no use at all. Without that, they are like the endless pacings of a caged animal. If they are not madness itself, then they are prelude to it. Now, one of us is lying is filled with your classic high school stereotypes, ranging from the jocks and the princesses, all the way to the geeks and the criminals. The reason this book was so interesting, however, is because it's written in the form of diary entries written from the perspectives of different characters. The two characters that stuck most with me, however, would be Addie, the princess, and Nate, the criminal. Now, the reason that I resonated with these two characters in particular is because at a moment in the story, they each felt a sense of inadequacy. Addie based her looks, her personality, everything on her friendships. And when her friends left her, she felt like nothing. Nate is constantly judged for the front he puts up and the fact that he used to deal drugs as a way of surviving. Much like these two characters, I've been judged specifically on looks and opinions rather than on personality as well. I've also based my personality around friends' opinions. Addie does eventually overcome this and wants to help Nate with it, as seen in this line. I wish he'd listen, because if anyone knows how badly you can screw up your life when you decide you're not good enough, it's me. And as my tale comes to an end, I wish you a happily ever after. Thank you.